Welcome back to Work Tech, everyone. Well, you would think that in between the holidays or in the midst of the holidays, it would be a slow time, but not when it comes to Work Tech funding news. We're still busy. And today, as you can see, I'm joined by the team from Paradox, who just announced moments ago a $200 million Series C round of venture capital that came along with a $1.5 billion valuation. It's big news for the industry. And um, I want to congratulate the team. And Aaron Matos, the CEO, is here. Uh, congrats. Could you, um, could you introduce your team? And uh, uh, congrats again. Sure. Good morning. Thanks, George. I'm Aaron. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Paradox. Uh, excited to be here and uh, on an exciting day here in the holidays. So happy holidays as well. I'll turn it over to Jess. Hi, I'm Jessica Rush. I'm our chief talent officer at Paradox. Thanks for having us. Hey, George, uh, Adam Godson, I'm our Chief Product Officer at Paradox, and uh, excited to be with you today. Yeah, it's so exciting to have you here. I'm, I'm really excited to share this news with the market, and um, you've, you've made me, uh, early in the year, I told everyone, watch Conversational AI, watch this space, we're going to see some major rounds coming, so you've made one of my predictions for the year come true right in the 11th hour. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, and, uh, um, so, um, there, I mean, there's so much to catch up on and around the deal itself, right? But I think part of the story here is 2021 and what led up to this deal. Um, you know, when I, um, and, and, and let's start with Paradox and what you do. And, and, you know, there are, while a lot of industry folks will watch this, why don't we set the ground with, you know, uh, what you do and who you do it for as a, as a company? Sure. Um, so we started this journey mostly because we've always believed that if you get the people thing right, you can build great teams that ultimately create great businesses. And we, over the last few years, kind of got obsessed with this idea that we um, had become addicted to our own software. And the idea that we had a couple of years back was an assistant could really help free people up from um, their software uh, and the assistant could help get work done. And we've been on this mission, if you will, for um, a couple of years now, focused on how do we build a tool that helps recruiters, candidates, hiring managers uh, to get the recruiting work done so that ultimately we free people up. And, you know, we started um, back in two, end of 16, early 17. So we've been at the journey for, for a little while now, but um, we've been blessed on working with some of the biggest companies in the world and some of the smallest companies in the world and everything in between. Um, and we believe there's an opportunity to create kind of a next generation of, of HR tech and recruiting tech. And um, we've got an amazing group that's working hard at that. And it's been a, a the last few years have been hard for lots of lots of people. Uh, at the same point, it's it's kind of had an upheaval on old technology and really force the need to, to, to look at tech stacks and how we modernize them. And we've been um, lucky enough to be in a good position for that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, the company, I remember meeting you, um, meeting Paradox, I should say, at the, that, the first big HR tech conference where you had a big splash and the evolution from, what, what would that have been like, uh, what year would that have been, Aaron? Probably like 2015 or something? Uh, we came out in uh, HR Tech in 16, and there was th there was three of us that had a, a much larger booth than we had any business being at. Um, and we, bar we borrowed some friends to, to man it with us. But um, yeah, end of 16 and then really early 17 was when we went to market aggressively. Okay. And, you know, seeing the product then and knowing where you are now, that evolution is, is, is incredible. It's, it's, you know, just uh, really a, a, a trajectory that's impressive. Um, there had to be some milestones in 21 that, that led to, you know, this round, what, you know, I'm thinking all across the board, the team, the product, uh, your momentum. Uh, what were some of those that, that some things this year that sort of built up uh, the, get you to the point of, of this round? Sure. I'll, I'll add a few pieces and let Adam take over. Um, I mean, for us, this has kind of been a continuation of growth. We did our Series B funding in, in May of 20, going right into the teeth of uh, uh, COVID. And, you know, that was a moment where no one was really sure what the next few years were going to look like. 
Um, for us, once we started putting the money to work and, and kind of what I'll call stepping on the gas, we have definitely seen immediate results. Uh, and, and it's just kind of been um, more um, on every step, like a better team, a bigger team, a, a more um, complete product that continues. Our product team spends a ton of time innovating around the product and, and dreaming what we can do next. Uh, and, and then the clients that we've had, I mean, we're, I, I count myself as one of the blessed, most blessed people in the industry. We get to work with some of the most amazing, innovative, um, envelope pushing, demanding clients in the space um, that are looking for the next generation. And we've, you know, 21 was a lot of that um, and, and, and big initiatives for us. Yeah. Yeah. Just to, to piggyback on that, I think um, a few things for us that are really important. One, one of those is um, our backgrounds are as practitioners. So Aaron, myself, Jess, uh, we are not a couple of Silicon Valley guys that had a hard time hiring at their last company and then started a company to, to fix hiring. We've all been in the trenches. And so we, we've got that particular lens of, of solving for the client challenge. Uh, and so for us, that leads us to do, to do things like operate really well in the ecosystem because it, it's really frustrating when vendors don't <laughs> uh, are trying to compete with each other and don't have the client in mind. And so being able to take the lens for the client to say, yeah, let's let's integrate with things. Let's work within the ecosystem. Uh, that, that lens has helped us to have a really client-centric view of, of the world. And then we spent a lot of time uh, in 21 scaling our, our software. And so being sure that we have a scalable platform that can work in the world's largest enterprises around the globe in uh, with the nuances of languages in Asia and in Europe and in North America. And, and so um, a lot of the scalability things that aren't always the sexiest press releases, uh, but are really, really important when it comes to building a, a long-term company of consequence. Yeah, well, you know, those those are the most important things when you when you're, you know, providing a product into the large, large global enterprises, especially I know I know that Paradox works with in high volume and, you know, knowledge work or, or lower volume environments as well. Um, but that scale requires you have to do a lot of boring things in order to be secure and, and, and on 24 seven. Um, the other thing, just the, you know, culturally as a team, um, you know, you're, you're Aaron, you, you brought, you know, two, you know, other members of the C-suite with you today. Um, that says something. I do a lot of these interviews. I, it's usually, you know, one other person. You always bring someone from the team here when you, when you come to talk to me, at, at least one other person. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, the team and scaling the team and, Jessica, do you, was there any were there any milestones this last year from a team perspective that you you know that you think of since you're you know the general officer and keeping an eye on that? Absolutely, and you know there are a lot of people that had a tremendous role in in reaching this point that obviously aren't on the call today um, that care a tremendous amount about our clients and what we're building together, and so you know we're proud to represent a really incredible group of people that are part of Team Paradox. Um, you know, there have been some really big um, growth opportunities and, and stories that have been part of, you know, 2021 and, and even before for the team, you know, acquisitions of fantastic team members that have joined us um, through Tradeify and Spats. We've nearly doubled the team over the last year, um, which wow. has been incredibly exciting, and then expanding um, our footprint globally as well. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And you know, the talk about boring things, uh, you know, I've been looking at the market and um, there, but there's been so much uh, capital, so many startups with, you know, at all stages, early, you know, pre-seed, seed, A, B, C, D, and so forth, right? Um, and uh, one of the things that I've been talking about, and I think this is another boring thing, but, you know, buyers need to really be thinking about the partner that they're selecting. And when I look at your trajectory, um, uh, not just the product and the team, but the capital that you've raised, you've been very efficient and, with your capital, which means that uh, you've driven success. You've been, you've been busy bringing on customers. Um, and now that puts you in a place where with this round, it's about you know, going to the next level and not you know, keeping the lights on and figuring it out. Um, and buyers need to be aware. I think it's, it's worth pausing for a moment for anyone that is making a selection. You know, you're in this world of cloud-based software, you're choosing a partner. And this is one of those things that doesn't 
doesn't come up in the demo. You know, it doesn't come up in the, uh, and in this world that we're in today, I think we're all very comfortable with startups and, and scale ups. And, uh, but we're, the market's going to bump at some point and there's going to be a reckoning. And it's folks that kept some powder dry mm -hmm. and were efficient with capital that you're going to want to be partnering with and that are, that are growing. Um, that's that's got it. That's all by design, right, Aaron? I mean, you've this isn't your first rodeo. You've got a Western motif in the back, so I feel okay <laughs> saying that this isn't this isn't your first rodeo. So you you went into this. This is sort of calculated in the 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 way that you're raising funds. Yeah, I, and and I appreciate that. And yeah, this is not my first rodeo. I've been bucked off a horse or two in in, in my life. Um, sometimes stabbed by bulls. Um, <laughs> You know, we, we, when we started this company back in 16, we always knew there was going to be some type of downturn. And the reality is, you know, COVID was a short-term blip on the economic side. And we've actually, um, you know, companies and, and the markets have been continuing to grow since then. Uh, but our, we've been focused on being capital efficient, really, so that we had options, as well as, you know, sometimes Silicon Valley companies are just focused on grow at all costs. And, and we believe in fundamentals and we believe in building for the long term. And, and that means, you know, balancing what I believe is an aggressive vision and aggressive growth with doing things the right way and, and sometimes being patient. You know, we, until, to, until today, we only had one institutional investor on our, on our cap table. Uh, and that was Brighton Park that we brought in, in last year. And prior to that, it was myself and friends and family. And so we were able to, to be, I'll call it patiently aggressive. Um, and, you know, reality is over the last year, people were sometimes looking at us as, wow, you didn't have the most funding. And what we really focused on was, well, hey, we, we think we have the best product and we have some of the best clients and we think we have the best team. And today, you know, we, we kind of flip-flop that. And, and this is a, obviously a relatively large Series C led by amazing investors with the Stripes and Tom Bravo and Sapphire Ventures and, um, and others. And, you know, being able to have a balance sheet that backs up um, where we're at in the market is important to us. We don't know what the future is going to hold. We want to be able to play for the long run. And we, you know, this isn't a, about us going crazy tomorrow and, and, and burning money in, in a new way. This is really about being disciplined and having the capital um, that can build for the long run. And, and that's the important part for us. This is, we, we talk constantly internally that this is, you know, maybe the second inning and we've got this really big vision and this gives us the ability to plan out and, and invest uh, for the long run while we've got to help our clients today. And balancing that is, is something that we're excited about. Yeah, there's a lot there, but I want to I want to um, dig in on those investors a little bit. Um, and I, mean, I usually don't spend a lot of time on that. I talk more about the product and, and the market. Um, but you do have, you know, traditional investors like Sapphire, who's, you know, a, a, a big name. They've been around in our space. A, a couple of the other um, investors, though, uh, aren't normally, I don't see them a lot. And I track as, as much of the investments as possible. So that, that says something. But there are a few that you didn't mention. Uh, one being Workday. That's, that's, in, that's got to be interesting to everyone. Um, and then uh, Indeed, another player from the space uh, who participated um, and then uh, Twilio, right? The uh, the text SMS comms group. What? How? How? Um, what was that? What, what was your the design and pulling that team together? Because I know Aaron that we've had other chats along the way. I know you've you've talked to a lot of investors. They've uh, you've been approached many times, so you were able to be selective. What what is it about these investors that made sense for for Paradox? Yeah, I mean, amazing question. For, for us, this really was about team building. And, you know, when again, we only had one institutional investor prior and, and all of a sudden we've added, you know, uh, 11 more. Um, but it was for us about how we set ourselves up for the future. And some of that was having capital partners that had a different view of the world, whether that's New York groups or San Francisco groups. And then the strategics were important for us. This was um, a question of, you know, as Adam mentioned earlier, we very much believe ourselves as ecosystem players. Um, we're not out trying to um, take from others as much as we are trying to expand the pie. 
And when we looked at this and said, how, how do we help build the company and who can we align with? It was, you know, frankly, it's humbling to be able to have Workday Ventures and Indeed and, and Twilio see the potential in our future um, and, and want to join us in that mission. And so um, get, getting some strategics that, that can help us ultimately to build what we think is the next generation of HR tech is important for us. And again, we're just kind of humbled to be able to have them along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to ask the question now because I, I can I can I know as the industry is watching this, um, they're wondering, you know, is this a path to an IPO? Is this, you know, what what does this mean strategically? Um, how how do you answer that? You know, I, I answer that the same way that I I think I've always answered these questions, and it was funny back in 2017. I have slides that I occasionally share with the company and. And, and we set out early and said we can. We we knew early that this could be a substantial, in, a, you know, company of consequence in the industry, and that we could build that we we call an enduring company of scale. And we're on that trajectory. And whether that means ultimately taking the company public or staying private, as companies get to do today for longer, you know, that's that's not the financing of the company is not the most important thing. What's mm-hmm. most important to us is. We build an amazing team that has opportunity to learn and grow. We take care of our clients and we build amazing products. If we do that, I think um, the rest will take care of itself. We we have been in a, you know, in the industry hasn't had a lot of, uh, especially out of recruiting um, and even HR tech, there hasn't been as, as many kind of public offerings as you'd expect. Right. There's lots of companies that have been funded. Um, as you mentioned earlier, there's, there's lots of capital in the market. So, we think it's going to be a competitive marketplace. I think that's good for everybody. I think that's good for um, our clients to be able to have lots of innovation and and lots of opportunities. But you know, we we talk a lot about running our own race and running our own races, delivering the products, um, creating the innovation we want, um, and, and and we're focused on that. And this this doesn't change that at all. Yeah, well, it's the, the way you've um, you've you've uh, it's like a. It's, it's it's a very strategic uh, play that you you on the funding side over over time you know with every round so you're at this point where um, I could you know you're you're you could be a major acquisition target there could be an exit that way you're on a you could be on a path to an IPO you could also as you said stay private longer and that bump in the market um, given how efficient you are with capital and the success you've had. Um, I, I could see paradox. You've already made a few acquisitions and I could see, I, I could see things getting really interesting in the next year or two. And I won't, I won't ask you to, you know, dive in on and share anything, what your plans are around those. I'm sure you're thinking about it, but, um, so our, our, back to the funding and the deal itself, I'm always, there, I, there are three constituencies that, that I think about, you know, what does it mean? For the team, what does it mean for the product, if that's a constituency, and and what does it mean for the market? And we've we've talked a lot a lot about the market and dynamics. Um, what about the team? What's what what can the paradox team expect? Um, a lot of time that gets overlooked in these in these conversations. You know, what should they be uh, anticipating now? Yep, for the team, we'll continue to grow. We've got uh, uh, we'll be roughly doubling the team again this year and uh, continued global expansion. Um, As the product continues to grow, that means new opportunities to better solve interesting and and challenging challenges and opportunities for our clients. And we're excited to help our team continue to grow and develop as well. Yeah. And uh, I know you've got a a world-class system to help you with that growth. And uh, uh, all the, all the jobs are up on the site for anybody who's, now, you know, if you've piqued anybody's interest today? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we, we really have an amazing team working together to create the future. And we're looking for people who want to be part of building um, with us and, and want to help us continue on that mission. So um, we'd love to hear from people. Uh, they can visit our, our career site and, and chat with Olivia at careers.paradox.ai. Yeah, that's cool. That's actually, that's, that's a good point. You get to interact with the product and experience it on, on literally on the way in from, from step one. Um, what about that product, Adam? What's, uh, you know, you've got, does this just let you reach all your, you know, achieve your wildest fantasies with this AI now? All this is, you know, what, what's going to happen for the product? Yeah, it, it does. Uh, not all at once, but, but, but I'm, it gives us a, a, a really large um, war chest to, to help uh, be strategic in that, in that way. And I think, you know, the, uh, 
one of the key principles for us is going to be how do we keep the innovative spirit and keep the things that have got that have got us here as we scale. Uh, and so how do we uh, put the right systems in place? Uh, we have the right culture in place. How do we continue to, to scale that as we get as we get bigger? And so, you know, I think of that from the client lens, right? You know, what can those people expect from, from us? And, and I think the short answer to that is more. We know expectations go up as we as we have this, but um, uh, is, is, you know, we want to continue to have that innovative spirit and continue to get more along with that client obsession. Uh, you know, one of the ways we've been able to be successful is by having that lens and really understanding our clients and, and not taking for granted the trust that they put in us, that that's, it's a big deal. So someone on the other end of, for all of our clients had to make a decision to say, I don't want to do things the old way. Uh, I want to do things through conversational AI. And, and they had to likely fight at their own organizations to, to be able to do that, to be able to say, I want to um, change the way that we do things. That takes a tremendous amount of courage on their part, and we, we don't take that for granted. So ultimately, we're doubling down on product to, to make those people seem smart. <laughs> we want to be sure that we're, we continue to champion and, and stand behind you know, those, those our clients who have been able to, to, um, to implement Paradox and to see those great results. But, but we want to continue on that journey to, um, to, to repay that trust they put in us and to, and, and to drive the product forward to, to uh, achieve our vision. Yeah. So is there, is there any, um, are there any big milestones looking forward uh, in, and this may not have as much to do with the funding as, as it is your, your roadmap looking into next year, but is there anything customers should be uh, anticipating um, that, you know, this just, you know, puts more wind in those sales? Well, I, I, I think uh, the, the innovation that, that we, we've brought to them over the last five years uh, will, continue, will, will continue. So I think a uh, one thing we brought is really rapid uh, in, innovation to them and be able to continuously bring results. And so being able to, to push uh, new features that sometimes uh, surprise and delight our clients, that they, uh, and, and, uh, but to be able to do that on a really rapid and consistent basis. And I think they'll see a lot more of that in, in 22 and, uh, and be able to see those things get bigger and better. And then, uh, you know, certainly around, around the world as well. Yep. Yep. So um, on the, on the customer side, are the, from a customer success uh, perspective, is that an area where uh, the team, I'm assuming the team's going to grow to support this, this growth. Um, is that, is that fair enough? And uh, to fair assumption. Oh yeah, or we're, we're go ahead, Jess. I was going to say the client success team has has grown a tremendous amount over the last two years, and will continue to to grow globally. Okay, all right, um, and uh, you're already global, right? Are there are there are there does this uh, take you make you even more global or or expansion plans? Does this put those in 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 play? Yeah, I think you know. We are global today. We've got multiple offices around the country, around the U.S. as well. Um, you know, you, you mentioned acquisitions, and we've we've been lucky enough to find a couple of, of great organizations that were really great fits with our Paradox mission, and, and we'll continue to to look for that. I mean, as a builder, you, I, I think all entrepreneurs are confident enough that they 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 could build everything. But once you've been doing this long enough, you realize you can't. You need people who are also champions to help kind of share your vision and, and to be able to grow at our scale. So, you know, we we very much will look to um, deploying some of this through acquisitive ways. Uh, it's important for us um, because there's brilliant people out there who, who share at least maybe not our exact view of the world, but a lot of it and share a lot of our same DNA and in putting clients first. I mean, that's the thing that during announcements like this, we forget, like, as Adam mentioned, I mean, there's so many clients who have, have, wanted to do new things who have kind of put their necks out for innovation. And that's the, you know, when I sit back, I'm like, I'm most happy today for our clients and for our employees that have worked so hard for this, that this is a, a bit of validation, if you will, um, that we're in the right direction. And we still, you know, again, we have so much work to do. This is, I think we're just scratching the surface. I don't think we've gotten anything perfect, anything, um, but, but we've gotten more right than we've gotten wrong. And, and that opportunity is, is out there. And this is, is validation for that. Yeah. Well, I have to say it's uh, it's huge news for the market. Um, I think, you know, such great news for your customers, your team. Um, I think you probably uh, dur I started out by saying this is normally a quiet time. I'll, I'll bet there are some competitors that thought they were going to have a more quiet time until this crossed their, their desk there. You probably rattled their their week off. So 
uh, you probably didn't intend that, but uh, that's, uh, this is big news and, and uh, I appreciate you sharing it here. Uh, congrats again, and thank you all for, for being here. Thanks, George. Thanks, George, appreciate it. Thank you. Have a happy holiday, great new year. You too, you too. Thanks everyone.